I want to talk about all the gloom that's out there amid 3.6% unemployment. You lead with that in your note. Uh, absolutely. I think I'm taking a lot of signal from the health and strength of the U.S. labor market. It surprised us consistently to the upside this year. Job creation at 350K per month on a three-month average basis. We know the Fed looks at this. It's pretty strong. And the unemployment rate is all the way down to pre-pandemic levels when we had a, we know we had a hot and very strong labor market. I think <clears throat> The labor market will matter a lot for the outlook of the U.S. consumer and their confidence to continue spending in the coming quarters. So from that, I think the doom and gloom on recession is a little bit uh, exaggerated at the moment. We parse inflation as services and goods. How do you parse the labor economy? Is it the recovery that we saw in restaurants and bars was a theme a year, year and a half ago or so? Where is that persistency of good news in labor now? What part of our labor market? So what we're seeing is a broadly based growth in job creation. And I think this is what kept job growth going for so many months. Now, this could turn around quickly, especially if we talk ourselves into a recession. But for a moment, I think let's pay attention to what we're hearing from companies, their hiring intentions over the coming few months. And right now we're seeing hiring freezes uh, or small job cuts predominantly in the tech and finance sector. I think if we see this being more broadly based in other sectors of the economy, this is when we need to start getting worried about the outlook for the U.S. job market. Can we talk about the housing market as well? Because we've had a series of data points that just point to a really dramatic cooling. And Diane Swank, who's now chief economist over at KPMG, was talking about how we saw mortgage demand dropping to a 22-year low in data this morning. She says the canary in the coal mine has lost its song. The correction in housing, the most interest rate sensitive sector, is leading the economy into a more significant slowdown or worse. Should we be more worried about how quickly the housing market is cooling off? I think this is a great question. We should focus on two things in the housing market. We're seeing a deterioration because of uh, bad affordability. Homes became very unaffordable for households because of the very fast home price appreciation post-pandemic and because of higher interest rates. We know the housing market is one of the most interest rate sensitive sectors of the U.S. economy, but we should be careful to extrapolate what's happening with house home sales mm. to the broader economy. We know this is one of the most interest rate sensitive sectors, but I'm at this point not convinced that this kind of dramatic slowdown is going to sp uh, spread to consumer spending because of how healthy their balance sheets are, how healthy the labor market is, and their ability to absorb some of the inflationary hits for, mm. in the cash buffer that we know they've accumulated. But given that, doesn't that mean that the Federal Reserve's job in trying to rein in demand in order to get inflation down is then that much harder? Is, is the U.S. consumer too resilient for them to be effective in doing that? I think therein lies the problem for the Fed. We have a very strong economy and they're trying to walk this tightrope of bringing inflation down while the unemployment rate only picks up a little bit because this will be absorbed in the job openings that are at record highs at the moment. I think we should be prepared for the for a Fed that needs to right. hike more than the markets are anticipating right now. Lorena, your job at T. Rowe Price is to talk to portfolio managers about sector bets and even individual stock bets. And it starts and ends with unit dynamics and price dynamics of the revenue line. What are you telling them about what revenues will do over the next 12 months? Uh, so I focus a lot on the U.S. consumer, and we've spoken a fair bit about it. Uh, already today. And so I think what happens with consumer spending over the coming months will be key for revenues. Of course, we're going to have a correction from the levels that we saw uh, last year that was unsustainably high spending for the U.S. consumer, but we're shifting uh, our view to focusing more on the services sector where we think the economy is going to rebalance and towards those staples as uh, activity normalizes and all the pent-up demand on goods and services uh, gets absorbed, uh, focus on those uh, necessities and non-discretionary spending for the consumer. 
Well, if the consumer's there, and, and you know, I see Atlantic G, Atlanta GDP, not Atlantic, Atlanta GDP statistics that are really quite gloomy. Should we trust those statistics, or is the resilient consumer going to surprise all? I think we, with every data report, we should really look under the hood and see what the details of that report are telling us. And what we're seeing in the NEPA accounts in the GDP numbers is that a lot of this weakness and volatility is being driven by inventory restocking and destocking by net trades, two components that tend to be very volatile. So over the coming months, we're going to sit here and discuss at great length the signal from GDP versus GDI data. Should we focus on personal consumers and domestic sales? And I think there's going to be a lot of debate on this. But uh, ultimately, we should focus on consumer spending and we should focus on how fast uh, jobs are being created in the economy. Well, something else we're likely to debate over several months is what size Fed hike we're going to get at any given month. But perhaps the more important conversation is where we ultimately are going to get. We've heard from Blackstone in the last 24 hours saying could be close to 5% on Fed funds when all is said and done. Jim Bianco agreed with that take. So I guess kind of a three-part question. How high do you think we get on Fed's funds? At what point do we reach it? And for how long do we stay there before the cuts follow? So I think that we probably get to 4% interest rates by the end of this year before the Fed takes an opportunity to pause and see the effects of uh, tightening financial conditions on the labor market and on inflation. And then I think risks for next year are pretty wide. If the economy continues to grow and surprise us to the upside, 5% interest rates, it's not unthinkable uh, if the Fed thinks this is necessary to bring inflation down, they will go ahead and do that. They've told us they really prioritize price stability at this point. When I look at market pricing, I think they're being a little bit too sanguine about uh, the Fed cutting interest rates already next year. I don't think it's going to be as simple as that in this business cycle.